Time magazine recently ran a lead article on the new genetics. And I think we're kind of haunted by the specter that Huxley brought on us with Brave New World, the idea of alphas, betas, and gammas, so that potentially we could breed up a group of people, let's say, who have IQs of 60, so that they could uh, go into a factory in Detroit and they would be perfectly content turning the nuts on the back wheel of a car, this sort of thing. We'd have a special elite group of people who were super intelligent. I think we're a long way from that. Um, I think, though, that we already have enough knowledge just from straight animal and plant breeding, the laws of simple breeding, to be able to say that if you had a man with super dictatorial powers who said, I want to make a super race, and you know, there is precedent for this. This has already been done in the Second World War uh, using very lousy genetics. But if you had a really turned on dictator who knew a lot of genetics, I would say in, in 50 to 75 years, he could make a population of people that would be unbelievable. You want them tall, he could make them. You want them to live longer, 20 years longer, by breeding the right kind of people, he could do it. Um, so this kind of crude genetics is certainly possible. To me, this is a scary, scary kind of power to have because we don't have the wisdom. We're all hung up with our own prejudices, uh, our own standards of what is good or desirable. And they often change. You know, when I look at the women I used to go around with, with when I was a teenager, my God, they're nothing like what I go around with now. And the reason is my standards change. And yet when I was a teenager, you couldn't have convinced me that those weren't really terrific, beautiful women I was going out with. So I think we're so fickle, we're so prejudiced, we're so hung up that I wouldn't want to see anyone try to apply this kind of knowledge. Sometimes I wonder whether scientists like myself who are expressing publicly a lot of concern about various uh, weapons, various dangers that science is bringing about, I wonder whether we're not uh, creating an aura of fear that's out of proportion to the reality of it. And I was into that space a while ago when it was brought to my attention that there was a paper in a journal called Military Review, which is put out by the American military. And in this book was a paper by a man who's a geneticist in Sweden, and he had published this thing called Ethnic Weapons. What he pointed out in this paper was that there are various differences among racial groups in terms of sensitivity to a number of nerve gases and these differences are inherited and if you could accumulate a number of different uh, genetic traits and devise chemicals that would attack specific combinations of these genetic traits that it should be possible to devise weapons that would selectively eliminate one race and not affect another when you think about it that's incredibly perceptive because the present-day weapons are really messy. If you drop one over a village in Vietnam, you kill off your soldiers if they happen to be around there as well as the enemy. But if you're involved in wars that involve different races, then clearly if you can eliminate blacks or yellow people and not touch whites, that's, uh, that's a very good idea. The imagination of the military is really unbelievable, and they're very far ahead of the general level of scientists, I think.